Get your eyes off people, eyes off the praise and worship team, eyes off yourself, eyes off me, eyes off the building. Get your eyes off everything but Jesus. That's why we gather today. And how much of Him do you want today? I want Him to come down and stand right in the middle of this room and touch everybody in here today. That's what I want Jesus to do. Why come here? <laughs> if he doesn't come. Why come here if he the Holy Spirit doesn't show up and move? He's here. How much of him do you want? How much manifestation in your life of the, of the Lord do you want today? He'll give it to you. We just sang that song, the more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I love you. Hallelujah. We look to the Lord of the harvest today, Father. We look to You today, Jesus. You're the author, the finisher of our faith, Lord. Jesus, You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your healing power is still real. Your saving blood is still real. Your forgiveness of sin and death is still real. Your life is still everlasting. And we love You, Jesus. 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 Jesus, rule and reign in our hearts today, Lord. Rule and reign in this service today, God. Rule and reign in my family today, my brothers and sisters in Christ today in this place. Rule and reign in Madera, California today, Father. Let the glory and the love and the manifestation and the angels flood this city, God. Let your peace and your grace and your favor and your strength and your glory come down. Let it rule and reign in our hearts and our city today, God. Let it rule and reign. Transform us today, God. Let our minds be renewed today by the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Let revelation come. Let wisdom come. Let everything that God has, let it come today. All that we need in our lives, Lord, we open up to it today, Father. We open up to Your voice. We open up to Your Spirit today, Father. We open up to the King of kings and the Lord of lords today, Father. We thank You for miracle signs and wonders. We thank You for harvest. We thank You for deliverance today. We thank You that we're all being set free and healed by the power and the risen Son. Hallelujah. Have Your way in my life, God. Have Your way in my life, Lord. Have your way in my life, God. Let me never be the same today, God. Let us never be the same today. <clears throat> Let this be a landmark day for us today, Father. Let change come, Lord. We receive change. We receive stepping into a new season of glory, a new season of miracles, a new season of harvest, a new season of your power and your love, God. Let the love of the Lord be shed abroad in every heart today, God. Let us have a manifestation of Your love, Father, from the Father's heart today in us, for others, God. <laughs> Just pour it out on us today, God. We receive from heaven, Lord. We receive from the throne room of God. We thank You that we're seated far above in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! Thank You, Lord! I thank You that pain can't live in this building today. It's got to leave bodies. Disease has to leave bodies. Hearts have to become renewed today by the power and the, and the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Shikarabasa <laughs> Shiba kanda la basa, shiba kola la bosa kira la besa kende la besa kira la banda, zovre bala la bosa kira la boste, shira la bonda la bende la be. Every devil in hell trying to interrupt this place, you have to go in Jesus' name. You will not be in this place. In the name of Jesus, I command minds to be free. I command minds to be free. I command minds to be free in Jesus' name. 
Devil, you are destroyed. You are cast out in Jesus' name. Minds be free from fear, anxiety, depression, torment. You will not live in this place. You will not hinder lives today. In Jesus' name, I release healing, healing and peace right now in Jesus' name. 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 In the name that is above all names, Jesus. 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 <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, thank you for the harvest today, God. Shakurabasa, the prodigals are coming back. The prodigals are coming back. Shakurabasa, I pray for an encounter with God. I pray for an encounter with God for them right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Shukurabasa. I pray for a God encounter to the prodigals right now, Lord. Everyone in here has a prodigal. There's someone in here that you know or that you're related to or, or whatever, your friend or whatever, you know they're away from God. We speak God encounter into the prodigals right now, God. We use our mouth to bless. We use our mouth to speak the oracles of God. We use our mouth to pierce darkness. A two-edged sword in our mouth that cuts. We speak life. We speak light. I say in Jesus' name, the prodigals, the prodigals will run from sin and run to the light of God. Prodigals will run from sin and run to the life of God. They'll run from sin and they'll run to God. Shakaba, come out of darkness. Tell them right now, come out of darkness. You come out of darkness and into the light. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now let me say this right now. Keep playing, but just keep playing, but listen for just listen for just a second. This is a prophetic church. So when we get up here and we start to say stuff like I'm doing right now, I had no idea I was going this direction this morning, but as I get up here and I'm led by the Holy Spirit and I say what the Holy Spirit is telling me to say or that, that, that the prophetic word that's coming up out of the inward man, my inside, my belly, my spirit, when I do that, a lot of us in here recognize that and they know how to hook up with that. That's why I feel like I'm 10 feet tall and bulletproof when I start to prophesy up here because there's a lot of people that grab a hold and they understand how to step over into that with whoever's speaking that prophetic word like just happened right now. And so there's, there's power there. But when I started to speak that about the prodigals, and when I, said, when I told you to say, some of you did it, some of you didn't, that's between you and the Lord. But that was, there was power on that word right there. When I said to tell them to come out of darkness and come into the light, there was something powerful. Everything's been powerful. It's been said. But that was very, very anointed to do and to say. And as you obeyed the voice of the Lord and you did that, when I heard you speak that, all of a sudden I got this flash on the inside, this vision on the inside. And I saw those of you that said that standing there in the army of the Lord with full armor on. You know how you see those pictures with... You know, we read about the, 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 the armor of God and we read about the breastplate and the helmet of salvation and the sword and we read about all the different armor there. That's what I saw in my spirit. I saw you and us. As you said that out of your mouth, it was like all of a sudden, boom, this armor came on you. Now, I'd kind of like to know more of what that means. I, 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 I'll ask the Lord, but I just I saw that in my spirit. The devil cannot penetrate the army of the Lord. He cannot penetrate when we fight in the Spirit. He cannot. 
Shakabalalabasa. <laughs> so, Lord, that's a word right there from the Lord. They are coming out of darkness. And they're coming back into light. <laughs> I see it. I see them. I see them. Thank you for the shift in the atmosphere, Lord. Thank you for the shift in the spirit. Thank you for the shift in these people's lives, God, that we've called back in. I thank you for restoration in their lives, their families. I thank you that landmark days, there is a landmark day for them. They will turn the corner. They will turn all the way around, Father. And I thank you for the encounter that they have with you and your angels, Father. I ask you for dreams and visions in their lives of need be God. Wake them in the middle of the night with your presence, God. Let them get a hold and understanding of your fear, the fear of the Lord, Father. Oh, that's a word from heaven. That's a word from heaven. That's a word from heaven. That's a word from the heavenlies. We praise you. Father, we thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. We thank you. We thank you that you've heard our declaration. We've decreed it, Lord. We'll be established. We're like the watchman on the wall. Isaiah 21, 6, God. What you show us, we'll declare. What you show us, we'll say. And we'll say by faith. We'll say believing. We'll say receiving. We'll say it because your word is true, Father. And I thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for the rest of this meeting today, God. Thank you for what you've showed me today concerning this meeting, Lord, and the lives that are here today, God. And Lord, I thank you that as we Move into our tithes and offerings time, Lord, that we just stay hooked into your spirit today, God. Because, Lord, I know that there is no limit to you. It doesn't matter how many people gather. It doesn't matter who's there. It doesn't matter. Lord, you, you are so wonderful. You'll come in and you'll move. And we need transformation today. We need your spirit. We need your love. We need you today, Father. We gather together in your name, Jesus. Let your name be glorified and worshiped today. Lord, I thank you that as we move on in this meeting today, Lord, that everything is done today by the Holy Spirit, Lord. And if you have nothing for me to say, I'll sit down, God. I don't care. I just want to do what you want me to do, Lord. And I thank you for change.
kiri ande heli ando sana nana hande de ki kori ande hari ando la mili ande de li ande siri ande hori amari ande ri ara hori ande kiri ara hori ande la ri ande hori ande Shiri and hari and o kori and hiri and e kiri and hori ara kiri and hari and e kiri and hori and a sori and hiri and e. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your presence, Lord. What she was saying was, your love is unlimited. Your love is unlimited. You bring your unconditional love, and it keeps on rushing like a flood. The love is unlimited. The love is unlimited from God. His unconditional love is unlimited. And it rushes in like a flood. We receive your love. We receive your love, Jesus. Some of you that have been struggling with certain things in here, the key to your deliverance is His love. Think about that. The key to your deliverance with whatever that is in your mind or whatever it is in your life is His love. Love casts out fear. Love covers a multitude of sin. What's love? Love's God. just saw a blanket of his love just come down. Blanket of his peace come down. I had something happen to me last Friday concerning what we're talking about right now. And I didn't know it was going to tie in today, but I see how it's tying in today in my life. Just some things I was delivered from, all because I got an understanding of a certain thing about the Lord and about his love for me that I knew was there, but I really didn't get a comprehension of it and a revelation of it until just a couple days ago. It's changed my life. Lord, let that love that we sense right now, Lord, let it go down into our spirits. We receive it. We receive your love. We receive love from the Father, the true Father, our true God, our true Father. We receive the love. <laughs> oh, shakara labasa. We receive your love, Lord. 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 Oh, oh, oh. Shana la man la Shina la man la Thank you, Jesus. Receive your love, Jesus. There it is. Just receive His love right now. The wind of the Lord just blow in your life. Shut up, I'm on a minute. If you'll draw me, 
If you'll draw me, I'll draw you. If you'll draw me, I'll draw you. You see, you are, he is, beyond description. Too marvelous for words. Too wonderful for comprehension. Like nothing you ever seen or heard. Can you grasp his infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of his love? You are beautiful, beyond description, majesty, a throne above. And we stand this day in awe of you. We are in awe of you. Majesty, holy God, to whom all worship and praise is due. We stand in awe of you. So simply draw me, and I'll draw unto you. And all the troubles will vanish, and all the hearts will be mended in the presence of Almighty God. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Now I want to give this out. This is what I feel like the Lord's wanting us to do right now. If you're in here and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to come up to the front right now. You've ever asked Jesus to be your Savior and you want to give your life this peace, this love that you're sensing right now. And you're in here and you've never done it or you don't know if you have or you don't know, you're not sure, but you've never asked Jesus to be your Savior to save you from hell so you can go to heaven. I want you just to come up here right now. Don't be embarrassed. Just come up here. I want to pray with you. If there's anybody else in here today that you just have conviction in your heart, you've been a walking away, you've been backsliding, you've been going the other direction, you know you need to make things right, I want you to come up here right now. I want to pray. There's power in this place today to restore, to heal, to set free. Just come up to the front right now so I can pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come up here with your eyes on Jesus. With your eyes focused on Him, He's your Savior, He's your lover, He's your friend. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want everybody that's in their seat still, I want you just to stretch your hands out to these people up here tonight or today. Have you ever asked Jesus to be your Savior? Yes, you are born again. Okay. Let me just pray for you. What's your name? I've met you before. Tony. Yeah, Tony. I've met you before. Father, I thank you for Tony. Stretch your hands out to Tony right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your freedom. We thank you for your love today. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that Tony loves you, that his heart's for you, that his life's for you. He's responded to you, Lord. So right now, in Jesus' name, I thank you that as he comes before you and rededicates his life back to you, as he lays down his life, and gives you his life. I thank you, Father, that your peace, your love, and your anointing is upon him. And Lord, whatever's going on in his life right now, Satan, take your hands off. In Jesus' name, he's a child of God. You have no right in the name of Jesus. And as he closes the door on you today by faith, I thank you that the door is open wide for the kingdom of the Lord in his life. And Father, I thank you that as he comes back to you, Father, I thank you that the joy of the Lord is his strength, Lord. That your joy over him gives him strength, Father. And I release the healing anointing into his body right now in Jesus' name. Have you been having any problems with your foot or your feet? Okay, so does it affect your feet at all? No. Okay, I don't know, I was just getting feet, but you're having rods put in your back. Father, in Jesus' name, right now, Lord, I thank you for healing him right now, supernaturally, Lord. Lord, that'd be awesome if the rods would just disappear and you'd create new bone. That'd be even better, Lord. So, Father, I believe 
in that right now in Jesus' name, Lord. A creative miracle, Lord. That he'll have full function in his back. Pain has to go in Jesus' name. And I thank you for the love and the fire of the Lord right now burning through him. And Lord, I thank you that these rods dissolve and healing flows right now in Jesus' name. Give him new bone, new bone, new bone. In Jesus' name, Lord. I thank you, Father. And Lord, I thank you that nerves heal right now in Jesus' name. That nerves heal right now in Jesus' name. Was there something you couldn't do because of the rod in your, rods in your back? What would it hinder you from doing? Anything? Okay. Right. Right. No, yeah, right. Fully function, yeah. <clears throat> right. Right. Do you want to do the normal things you used to be able to do? You want to go back to work? Jesus could put you back to work. Jesus can put you back to work. Mark 9, 23 says that all things are possible to them that believe. I know you believe. You wouldn't have even come up here if you didn't believe. But I believe Jesus can put you back to work. I believe he hears your heart's cry. I believe if you'll ask in his name, he'll give you your desire of your heart. Lord, we thank you right now that Tony can return back to work. He wants to. He'll open that door right now, and I thank you that healing flows, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Healing angels just minister to my brother right now, Lord. Mm. <laughs> healing angels flow. Healing angels. Full movement. Full movement in his back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's God's will for someone to have peace. You know that? It's God's will for someone to be healed and, and, and have the desire of their heart. So I thank you for that in this man's life. In the name of Jesus, Lord. You keep in touch with us. I'm believing God with you. That's one thing you've got to realize about this, this fellowship here. Is these people, there's, 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 there's several folks in this place that have pinpointed on you today. And they're going to be praying for you, I can promise you that. I don't, we don't even have to ask them, I just know they will. I know the kind of people they are. Yeah, God will bless them and God will bless you. Because we love you and he loves you. And so Lord, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. Do you feel anything? Does it feel, just be honest, do you feel fire? Do you feel, what, do you feel anything? Touching your body? When you first I first started praying. Felt like a heaviness on you or something? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. A load was lifted from you. Yeah, that sounds about right. That I can explain that to you if you want me to. It's a demonic oppression trying to hold you in a box. But you came up and said, no, Lord, here I am. And, and the, the Lord came in and broke that off you. That's the spirit of freedom and liberty that he has for you. I thank you. As it's broken off his life and his mind, I think it's broken off his body. And spirit of infirmity has to leave in Jesus' name. And total healing will spring forth. Isaiah 58, 8. You will have a new life. 
and your health will spring forth speedily. And the Holy Spirit will be your rear guard. Isaiah 58, 8. You need to chew on that for days and get that in your spirit and speak it over your life. When I had leukemia, that's what I spoke. That word was given to me in March of 2008. And I spoke that. And guess what? I've been healed for almost 10 years now, totally free from cancer. And I still speak that healing word. A new life. Your health will spring forth speedily. And the Holy Spirit will be your rear guard. That's for you in Jesus' name. Amen, brother. I'm sorry to make you stand up here so long. God wanted to just touch that man. Isn't that cool? Jesus? You ever accepted Jesus as your Savior? You have? You just, you just want to rededicate your life? Just come before him? That's such a sweet heart that you have right there. You're welcome. Jesus says in the Bible, he says, come to me, little children. And you know what? You're, little, you're a little child, but we're little children too. We're the children of God. So we can come to him anytime. Isn't that precious and awesome? Amen. What's your name again? I'm sorry. Can I hold your hand, Liliana? Father, I thank you for Liliana. Just stretch your hands out to this young woman of God. She cut it up. I can't even miss This is what I see, Liliana, as I took your hand and I started to pray for you. You might not understand this at first, but that's okay. Your grandmother will help you. What I saw was Jesus come down from heaven, and I saw, like, in his hand, he had, like, this fireball, like a ball of fire. And when I started to pray for you, I saw him come, and I saw him put it right on the inside of you right here. And that's the fire of God. That's a burning fire of his love. It's not here to hurt you or to harm you or to burn you. It's not that kind of fire. But it's a fire of his love in you. And you're going to grow up to be an awesome woman of God. See, my hand, my right hand tingles when the healing anointing comes into it. Not every time, but sometimes it does. And Some folks believe me, some folks don't. <laughs> but that's okay. But it starts to tingle, and it's tingling right now. It wasn't tingling earlier. It just started tingling when I grabbed her hand. So, Father, I thank you for that healing anointing, Lord, that's in her. To lay hands on the sick. Oh, and they'll recover. That healing fire, Lord, in Liliana's body right now, Lord. Oh, man, glory. She'll receive. She'll receive everything that you have for her, God. Yeah, she'll bring healing to the masses, Lord. Healing to the masses, Lord. That fire of God that's in her, that's been placed in her, will bring healing to the masses, Lord. Her words will bring healing. Her touch will bring the fire and the glory. Let me lay my hands on her head. In the name of Jesus. I impart that word right now to her, Father. <laughs> There's like a wave of anointing coming over you. If your grandma wasn't behind you, you probably would have fell down. That's how strong it is. You feel that? Yeah. What does it feel like? It feels like God's touching you. He is. That's His presence. So you can have this kind of presence every time you ask Him for it. Just say, God, let me feel your presence. I love you, Lord. When you say that, he'll just keep touching you. Like when you're in your room, God, thank you for your presence. Just let your presence come into my room, Lord. When you do that, you'll feel the presence of the Lord. He's marked you. Liliana, you've been marked today by God. How old are you? Six years old. Going to be seven. I can't wait to watch what the Lord does in your life as you grow up. Man, that's so cool. Fire of God, I saw him just put it right inside you right there. Amen. Jesus loves you. 
And you know what? Here's the thing. Jesus knows that you love him. He knows that. He's your helper. He's your, he's your friend. Amen? I love you. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, we love you today. You know what? See your kids right now. Those of you that have children and grandchildren, just put them right now before your face. Look at, look at them. See their face. Bring them up before you. God is intervening in their lives. I'm telling you right now by His Spirit that He is intervening in their lives. The ones you see right now before your face. He is working. Angels are working. The Holy Spirit is working on them. And there's coming a day and an hour where you're going to see them Humble himself before the mighty hand of the Lord. That's the harvest that's coming. Those people that you see right now, they're the harvesters. And they're going to come back, and then they're going to go back out into the field, and they're going to harvest because of all the junk they've gone through, the, the bad decisions they've made, the things they've done. They're going to learn from those, and they're going to realize that as they come back to the Lord, God's going to use them to speak in the lives that the people that they are going through the same thing that they went through. The harvesters are coming back. <laughs> God, we believe that today, and I know it's true, Lord, and I will keep speaking it, and I will keep saying it until the fullness comes in their lives, Father. I just want you guys to know that us as pastors, me and mom and dad, and I know there's other people around here that do the same thing, we pray not just for you, but for your families too. I'm just being honest with you. 90% or more probably of my thoughts throughout the day is about you. And this, this church. And this congregation. This city. Just being honest. Not to brag or for you to come up and pat me on the back. I don't care about all that. I'm just saying we care about you and your families. And your kids. And your grandkids. It's so dear to our heart because we want to see God just move in your life and your family. And I know He's bringing restoration, guys. We're in a season of harvest. We really are. And we're learning how to be harvesters, all of us. We're learning how to flow with the Lord and with the Holy Spirit and listen to what He's saying. What He wants us to do, where He wants us to go. What He wants us to say. What he wants us to pray. So Lord, I thank you right now for your love and your peace and your presence that's in here, God. Lord, I thank you that the angels are here to minister, that there's an angel in this room writing down everything that's being done today. He's making account for us and our hearts before the Almighty God. And that angels are being sent out into our families and our children's lives, grandchildren's lives, being sent out into our friends and our co-workers, being sent out to do the work of the Lord. And Madera, California will be what God has called it to be. A habitation of the glory of God. We thank you for angels ascending and descending out of this building, God. Doing the work of the Lord on our behalf. I believe that, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh, God is good, man. 
We're going to receive our tithes and offerings this morning. And, um, you know, I, if you need an envelope, just lift your hand. And we'll get you one. But, you know, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I was taught at a young age to give my tithe and to give my offering. And I was taught why and <clears throat> the reason why we do it and why we do it. And one of the other things I was taught was that it's important. And, and, and I, I remember hearing dad and mom talk about this when I was a child. And I didn't really understand what they were saying probably until about just about probably 15 years ago or so. I kind of got an understanding of it. But and I've watched over the years folks that have come through the, the church and the ones that, that were tithing and the ones that weren't tithing. And I've watched. I'm just being honest with you. I can't really, you know, I, I'm sharing this for your sake. <laughs> for your encouragement. But I've watched folks that have tithed. I've watched God keep them. I really have. And you might be sitting there going, well, you know, well, I can sit there and say, well, you know, too sometimes. I was a tither and I got cancer. But that didn't Stop the healing power of God and the blessing. God still did what his word said he would do. He still took care of me. He healed me, restored me, and now I'm where I'm at today. But I didn't give up on my tithe. Well, you saying that tithing will, you know, heal you. You saying that tithing, tithing will bring the blessing of the Lord into your life. Because you're making a covenant with him. Tithe is covenant. You don't have to shed your blood to make a blood covenant with God because Jesus the Son already did that. But you make a covenant on your decisions. You make a covenant with God through your obedience to Him. And I've always watched the Lord's hand come through in my life because I've obeyed His word with tithes and with offerings. Tithes and offerings are two different things. Don't have time to get into all that. But I believe that... I mean, just think about it. How awesome is God? I just want 10%. What if he said, I want 90%? It still wouldn't change the fact that we still need to obey God, right? Just give me 10% of your first fruits. Just give me 10%. And you know what the 10% does? It blesses you. It keeps you in covenant. The Bible says, that that, 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 that word rich there in the Bible, it says that f it means full supply, abundant provision. Doesn't mean Rolls Royces, Bentleys, houses in Florida, Cancun, all that. That's all good and well. And if you want to do that, go for it. Have fun. Enjoy it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying abundant supply, full provision is God's abundant supply. Everything he has when you need it, he gives it to you. Full supply. And then it talks about abundant provision. Abundant provision. That's in your life. That's in your job, that's in your finances, that's in your health, that's in your families. Abundant provision. I want the provision of God in my life. That's why I tithe. I want to keep covenant with the Lord. That's why I give my tithe. And I'm telling you, I've watched over the years as a pastor's kid and being in the ministry and around the ministry all my life, I've watched people quit coming to church because they got a dollar raise. They would rather take a dollar raise in their work and it forced them to work on Sundays. And they've quit coming to church all because of a dollar more an hour. And I've watched people die young. I've watched people's families break up. I've watched people leave church. I've watched people get on drugs. I've watched people get on alcohol. I've watched people go into full perversion. All because the love of money. I know this isn't popular. Some of you might leave the church today because of what I'm saying. But it's the truth. The love of money. The love of money. is the root of all evil. The love of it. If you can't obey God with your, with your pocketbook, what are you going to obey Him in? 
He loves you. Whether you tithe here or not, it's up to you. God's going to take care of us no matter what. This ministry will keep going because he's called it to. So I'm not up here trying to hold you at gunpoint. Give me your money, Glenn, you know. Even when we didn't have money here, God still gave us money. I know that, doesn't sound, that sounds weird, but it's still the truth. My family hasn't gone without. My family's always been blessed, taken care of. You know, I've watched mom and dad, you know, go for months without getting a paycheck. God always took care of them. My dad hasn't missed any meals. Some of you can tell that, you know. He's, he's, he's always, he'll see that later probably. And he'll text me and threaten me. I'm docking your pay, you know, or something like that, you know. But <laughs> the Lord loves us, man, and he wants to provide. We've been taught well around here concerning tithes and offerings. There ain't nobody I've ever heard in the land uh, better than my mom, the way she talks and teaches about tithes and offerings, man. She's anointed to do it, and it's good. And a lot of us know what I'm talking about today, but I want to encourage you. Keep obeying the Lord your finances. If he tells you to give something to your neighbor, go for it, man. It's not only for them, but it's for you, praise God. And it's a blessing to give and smile and watch people just enjoy what God's blessed them with. It's so good, man. Hey, man, I love you guys. I'm not even preaching yet. And I love you guys. Lord, thank you for this time of tithes and offerings. Lord, I feel like I'm in loving company today. Maybe only a few want to throw rocks, Lord, but that's okay. No, I'm just kidding, but I know people. Lord, I thank you that I am here with my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. And as they give today, I thank you for full provision, abundant supply. Lord, I thank you that you bless them coming in and going out. You bless them in the field. You bless them in the city. You bless them in the country. Their families come into the kingdom, hallelujah, because of the covenant we have with you, Father, in our tithe and in our offering today, Lord. Thank you for the favor of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to it. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Stand right now. Lord, thank you. Lord, we worship you right now with our tithe and our offering, Lord. This is a holy thing before you, Father. These men and these women, Lord God, have given their life to work and to do what you've called them to do, Lord. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak the blessing of the Lord upon everyone in this place today, Father. I thank you, Father, for health in their life, health in their families. I thank you that you meet every need according to your riches in the glory by Christ Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that your word says that we can have favor with you, God, and that we'll have favor with man, hallelujah. And I thank you that you open doors that no man can close, and you close the doors that no man can open, Father. I thank you, Lord, for full provision in their lives. In Jesus' name, use us to bless Use us to bless in word or in deed, Father. And I thank you for this. We worship you with our tithe and our offering today, Lord. And I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. The blessing of God on every man and woman in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. You receive it? Amen. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, praise and worship team. We love you. Well, good morning. <laughs> good to have you this morning. Just quick, uh, a few announcements. You have your bulletin. You can see that the Kid Nation is selling fireworks. They're on the corner of D Street in Cleveland. So if you're going to buy fireworks, please go there and buy them. Uh, it really helps their ministry. But please, like my neighbors, don't shoot them off at 1230 at night. Okay? Because I get a little cranky when I am woken up. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> no, you don't want Linda cranky. Okay, there's uh, the youth uh, uh, are in having a born for this com youth conference. Uh, make sure you see Josiah concerning that uh, youth and parents, all right? Uh, that's in July the 20th and tw through the 22nd. A father and son camping trip in August the 25th through the 27th. 
Please sign up at the front welcome desk uh, and see Ted uh, for any kind of details about that. And uh, uh, make sure you go to that, guys. It's, I'm sure it's a lot of fun. Camping's not my thing, but <laughs> guys like it an awful lot. Also, uh, if you have any baby bottles uh, still out, uh, please bring them back in. Uh, whether they've got money in them or whether they're empty. It just saves us from having to buy bottles next year. A uh, special announcement. Uh, I know some of you have already been to Israel, uh, but uh, I was blessed to uh, be able to go here three weeks ago, and Sabrina has asked me to share the pictures, uh, and I'm doing that tomorrow night at 6.30 here at the church during the women's ministry, but anybody can come. Uh, that wants to see them, I promise I will not show you all 2,000 of them. <laughs> I've tried to cut them down, really, <laughs> but I know uh, that uh, you will enjoy them, and it will encourage you to maybe make a trip on your own. It's, it's a wonderful place uh, of Jesus, you know. I know he's here, but there's where he was physically. All right. Ah, hi, me. Well, praise the Lord. <clears throat> um, I asked Pastor Mike if I could just share something really quick here. Um, I'm sitting there behind the drums, and, and Pastor Mike was taking the offering, uh, receiving the offering, I should say. And something that the Lord was kind of showing me, um, I thought it would be worthwhile just to share with you guys. Now, I don't have any kind of empirical data to share with you this morning. I didn't research this or anything. But I'm willing to bet, if I was a betting man, I'm willing to, willing to bet that most people, when it comes to tithing offering, when it comes to giving, when it comes to releasing finances from you, I'm willing to bet that the majority of the issues that people have is not with the fact that they, uh, whether they struggle with uh, knowing that God loves them or not, but it, it comes to a point where whether you trust him or not, whether you trust him or not, right? You know, if you trust somebody, you're going to be willing to loan them anything, give them whatever they need or whatever it is. But that's what, what God was showing me here is that there's a trust issue in people's lives. Now, I don't know who's dealing with trust issues with God. Maybe all of us could take this word. But I wanted to just release this because I believe this will set people free. And a lot of times, all you need is just a little reassurance. And here is a testimony of a person that has trusted the Lord for over 30 years now. And I consider myself to be blessed. You know what I'm saying? I'm blessed. Now, do I have everything in the world? No. But I'm a blessed man. I'm living blessed every single day. And I could go on and on on that, and I could preach the message on that, and I'll just from shooting from the hip, but I won't. But here's the thing I wanted to share with you guys is be assured, be assured yeah. that God is trustworthy. And what he said he'll do, he'll do it. And when he says that, prove me now. And see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you can't even contain. Just continual. Yeah. Right? Right. That's what he tells us. Right. So he's trustworthy, and so just trust the Lord. When it comes to giving, your offering and, and, uh, and your tithe, believe, know that he can be trusted, that he will do what he said he would do in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jaime. Let's get turn off. Thank you. It's true. Amen. Man, no, uh, no better man could say it the way he said it right there. Amen. Said it his way. Praise the Lord. Turn over to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. Praise the Lord. You know, we could go home right now just blessed. My socks are blessed off. Praise God. God has just done so much, said so many things to me. You know, not everything that God says to us, we ought to share all the time. You know what I mean? And uh, there's just been things he said to me this morning that have just about my personal life and things that he showed me about my personal life. It's just, it's just really blessed me, and I can't wait to go home and just meditate on them and write them down and stuff. And God does good things, amen? 
And uh, he, he loves us no matter where we're at in life. You know what I mean? He understands um, where we're at spiritually. He understands where we're at naturally. He understands where we're at physically. He understands where we're at in every situation. And it's his job to just love you. And it's his job to help you fulfill the plan and the purpose that he has created you to fulfill on this earth. See, this is just a warm-up for heaven. <laughs> I don't know really where that came from. I just said it, to be honest with you. So now I'm thinking, okay, now how do I uh, go from what I just said right there? I just said it. This is like a warm-up from heaven before we get to heaven. Why can't... Why can't, there's nowhere in the word where I've ever said it's limited, that God's limits, that he limits you, that he, I've always read that if whatever you need from him, whenever you need it, how you need it, uh, uh, whatever it is that you have or desire of or whatever, he will come down and he will give it to you. Yes. It says, in, it says uh, in Mark 11, 23, 24, if there's a mountain in your way, whatever the devil's put in your life, if there's some kind of hindrance, some kind of deal in your life, if the devil's trying to create some kind of a mountain or some kind of thing in front of your pathway to block you from keeping you from the fulfilling the will, the plan, the purpose that God has for your life, it says that if you will say to this mountain, be removed and go into the sea, it says that whatever you Believe whatever you say out of your mouth, God will do it for you. When you say it. But He gives us the authority to say and to use the word of the Lord to take dominion on earth. Not only in your personal life, but in other people's lives. He gives us full authority. And one of the main things, and I love it that, that Sister Karen said it during praise and worship, because I can already, by the, by the voice of the Lord and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, I can already kind of see the direction I was going to go during this meeting today concerning the teaching, preaching, encouraging, exhortation, whatever you want to call it. I could already kind of see a path he was wanting me to go to because he started talking to me about our mouths. And she got up there, and she started talking about her mouth. She was using a personal example in her life this last week about something that took place and how she did and how, and how she went about dealing with it before the Lord and all that kind of stuff. Folks, our mouth will make us or break us. Our mouths will curse us or bless us. It's the truth. I have found myself over the years saying stuff that does not line up with the Word of God. Myself. And over the years, I've watched the loving hand of the Lord have His hand on me, even though I said stupid things, immature things, things that didn't make sense, things that weren't biblically correct, things that were just totally goofy. And I've watched God's hand on me work me through those things and reveal those things to me, saying, Mike, quit it. Or show me some other example or some other way of see how your words will affect your personal life, Mike. See how things that you've said has caused things to come about in your life, Mike, good or bad. And our words and our mouth are very, very critical, very, very powerful in this time, in this season that we're living in. They've always been because God's spoken His Word. It's from the beginning of time, He's known that our mouths... We're going to lead the way in our life, whether we're going down the wrong way or the right way, guys. Our mouths really, really, really are important. How many parents in here, including myself, has ever said something to your child or to your kids that you wish you hadn't said and you had to go back and you've had to ask for, to ask, ask, apologize to them and admit that you shouldn't have said that and that was, was ridiculous, you shouldn't have did that, and you, ask, and you say you're sorry and you ask them to forgive you. Any parent in here ever had to do that before? I've done that so many times. But every time I go and I do that, it brings correction in my life. But it also accomplishes love in their life. God corrects us because He loves us. I, I, I don't know how to get it over to you personally, 
But God has been so on top of me and on top of things in my life concerning my mouth lately to where he just wants it to be almost, I'm not going to say the word because it can't, perfect. But it's like, he's just like, and not that I'm some bad person and I'm always cursing and, and you know, and saying and critical, not, not none of that, but he wants all of my mouth. I don't know how to explain it to you. And I'll tell you, and I know what a lot of it is, because I think a lot of it's cons- is going to, this is going to hit home with a lot of you. He's wanting a lot of us to go into that secret place and use our tongue to magnify and to glorify the King of Kings. That's where change comes in your life. That's where you start to get healed. That's where you start to get healed of past wounds. That's where you start to get healed of past things that maybe were taught to you that weren't right. Or things that were done to you in your life that weren't fair or right. Because we all have had those before. We've all gone through those, those times of life. All Every single person in this place. And we might even go through some more as time goes on. But I'm going to tell you right now. The love of the Lord will heal. The presence of the Lord will heal. The, the wisdom of God. The revelation of God. His love will heal you in every area of your life. But let me say it this way. And we all are included in this today. This goes for all us we've got to be willing to number one listen to God and then take the measures and the steps to change into what he's saying and to do what he's saying sometimes we we buck that we fight that because and a lot of times the reason why we do this I'm feeling kind of smart up here this morning I don't know how this is happening but I mean Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He makes you look like a genius. But this, but we go through times and seasons. We go through things where a lot of times we fight it and we buck that word from the Lord. Or we, but, oh, I know I need to change, but man, but we do it because we don't know how to do it. Because, and I've done this a million times, we look on the inside and say, how am I going to? change this, or not act like this, or not believe this, or not say this, or not do this. We look into ourself. Sometimes we can find certain things in us that we can help, we can change, we can gleam some things from our own personal life and not go. You know, one of the reasons why I never used hard drugs in my life was well, because I grew up watching people use hard drugs in the church. And how it just destroyed them. And their family. People, see, usually when we, the people we hung out with when I was growing up was the church people. That's who we hung out with. And there were some of them that were on drugs. And I, I, I learned from that that I don't want to go that direction because I saw what it did in those people's lives, man. And it scared me. Why did I say that? I don't know. I just did. But I learned something from that. One of the things I used to really struggle with in my life personally was having a critical spirit and just criticizing and complaining and griping and looking at the glass half empty. Is that the saying, I guess, that's what it would be? And, oh, I doubt if that's ever even going to work out. Forget that crud. Yeah, right. They're going to come through? Give it a break, man. They ain't going to do what they said they're going to do. But that's how I used to be, a lot. What? Whatever. Yeah, right. We'll see. Prove it. From Missouri. <laughs> from Missouri? What does that have to do with anything? The show me state? Yeah, okay, I get it. I'm not from Missouri, but you can take that up with, with uh, Grandpa Purcell after church. We'll see how that goes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the show me state. Yeah, prove it. But see, one of the things that was going on in my life was there was an insecurity there and a fear there that I was going to get done wrong. Yeah. 
So when you feel like you're going to get done wrong and things aren't fair, you've been treated wrong, you know, why has this happened, blah, 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 and you start holding resentment and hatred and unforgiveness. You know, this guy ripped my dad off. I want to go over and I want to break every single window out of his truck and destroy his stuff because he stole from my dad. You know, all that kind of stuff. The tires slashed, windows broken out. You know, all kinds of crazy stuff that happened to mom and dad all because they love God and they love Madeira and they love the people. And as a kid, you sit and you watch that stuff happen to your parents. And you want to do something about it. Mom and dad didn't know I wanted to do something about it, but, and there was some things that I did do about it that nobody knows but me and God. And I've repented. That's all in the past, right? Under the blood, it's gone. It's in the sea of forgiveness. But, come on, man, let's just be real, you know? But, when you get into a place in your life where you feel like you can't control things and things are just too hard, that's right where you need to be. Because we can't control things and we can't make things come out the way we always want them to come out. All God asks of us if we're going to follow Him is just to sit at His feet and come before Him. And when you get blindsided, when you get tripped, when you run into a wall where it seems like, whoa, what in the world just happened here? That's where your face should rise. That's where you should look deep down on the inside at really who you are in Christ and grab a hold of what the word of the Lord is saying concerning that situation, that need, that area. And if there is something in you that wants to buck that and go against that, you tell it to get out. You know, I had, a, I had a supernatural experience. And it isn't some kind of, like, something full of fireworks and the, and the, the spectacular, nothing like that. But Friday, I was, I was sitting in my living room early in the morning, just spending time with the Lord. These thoughts of fear started coming up in me, just out of the blue. I'm sitting there, sipping on Starbucks, drinking my coffee, and just my Bible, and I'm just loving on the Lord, and all of a sudden, these thoughts started coming from the devil. Fear. Spirit of fear came and visited me. Right in the middle of my time with the Lord. And it stinking made me mad. And I couldn't yell because everybody's asleep still because I was up really early. And I said, devil... I didn't invite you here, and I don't invite your thoughts, and I am not taking your thoughts. And I didn't get stand up and flex and get all, I didn't do anything. I was just sitting there with my legs crossed. And I just said, devil, I'm not taking your thoughts. Your game is over in my life. Spirit of fear is over in my life. I can't Jesus. And Lord, and I went right to the Lord. I was done with him. That's all I had to say. I went right to the Lord, and I said, Lord, set me free in this area. There's some areas I know inside that I need to be free from concerning fear. Lord, set me free from them, Lord. I want freedom in them, Lord. I want to change. I'm not living like this. I'm not doing like this. I'm not going to be this way. I'm not. I'm not going to yield to the thoughts of the enemy. I'm not going to do it, Lord. So you've got to do something. I'm just going to be honest with you. I didn't fall on the floor. I didn't go into a trance. I didn't do anything like that, which that's all can happen. I just sat there, and I felt the peace of God come on me. And I don't know how to explain it to you, but I know it was like he reached down on the inside of me and did something in me. Because he tries to use, the enemy tries to use, now this is going to mean something to some of us in here today. He tries to use a certain thing in our life that we've had a trauma in. And the devil tries to bring it up and he tries to get us to regurgitate that thing and believe it and chew on 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 it it till it overtakes our mind and our literal physical bodies begin to react with panic, fear, anxiety, depression, torment. And he tries to get us over into that land 
because he knows if he can get us over to that land, it'll distract us, and it'll make us physically miserable. And that's the devil's job, to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to steal your peace. He wants to steal your love. He wants to steal your mind. He is not, and I'm not here to preach about the devil today. I'm just telling you, he's not playing games. He never has and he never will until he's thrown in the lake of fire, praise God. But he's here to try to disrupt you from being who God has called you to be. And if he can get you to receive those thoughts of fear, those thoughts of unworthiness, I'm not good enough, am I really saved? You know, on Thursday, just show you how he works, another example, on Thursday, I was kind of feeling on edge a little bit on Thursday, and I know why, because I have a doctor's appointment this Thursday. So he tries to come at so I'm talking about the trauma stuff. He tries to bring all that stuff and tries to get you over into something that's not even reality or even true. And I'm driving over Thursday, and I started feeling edgy. I was driving over here to get something, and I was feeling real edgy. And I said, devil, shut up. I know I have peace. Nothing's changed. The word of the Lord is still the same concerning this thing in my life. And I pull up, and I was sharing this with CJ the other day, how the devil's just, how, how he's just an idiot. Like, he just runs his mouth. I've known a lot of guys over my lifetime that have run their mouth, and they were always the first guys to get knocked out when it came to a fight. You know what I'm saying? Those are the ones you never had to worry about. It was always the ones that were real quiet. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, I'm waking up now, and I'm bleeding, and what happened, you know? I'm sitting at the stoplight over here at 4th Street and Sunset. I'm sitting here, and by that time, I'd begin to kind of worship the Lord, you know? And I'm sitting here, and all of a sudden, this thought came to me, and it was from the devil. And I don't, I, I've never been a drinker. I don't drink alcohol. I haven't drank, I mean, I've sipped a beer or had a few beers, okay, I'm not going to lie, but whatever. But a long time ago, but I'm not a drinker. I was never an alcoholic. I was never really into that kind of stuff, whatever. just wasn't a big deal to me. But... I'm sitting there, all of a sudden I heard, go get drunk and just forget about everything. <laughs> That's what some people do. It wasn't go get drunk on the Holy Ghost, it was the devil. Go get drunk and just forget about it and you'll be numb and there'll be no big deal. I had that thought, and that thought never comes to me, ever. I never think about that. And I, and I literally, I laughed. I said, and I literally left. I said, devil, you're trying everything now. You, you're, you're, you're losing. You're losing grip. That's, 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 you're, you're finished in my life. You're trying all kinds of stuff that don't even, that doesn't even, I don't even have a desire for that. That just proves to me, devil, that you know that you have no other way, so you're trying every way you can to pull out of what the purpose and plan that God has for my life. Just like he's trying to pull you out of, with everything he's got, pull you out of the plan and the purpose that he has for your life. Guys, he is a liar. He loses. He's been defeated. Jesus has already taken care of it. All you've got to do is run to the Father. Every time. He runs his mouth, rebuke him, and run to the Lord. And if you have to do that a hundred times in one day, do it. You can never go wrong getting into the presence of the Father. You can never go wrong. Never. There's always peace. There's always mercy. There's always love. There's always grace. There's always conviction even there sometimes. There's chastening there sometimes, which is a good thing. He does it because he loves us. But I literally, Friday morning, felt him do something on the inside of me. And ever since that day, there's been a peace there in my life. It's almost like I finally got a hold of what he was trying to tell me all these years. And it came, and it just came 
of me just making a decision. I'm done with this. I'm tired of this. I'm not going to live this because the word of the Lord has already said what I am, who I am, what I'm going to do, and what's going on in my life. And that's it. Where a lot of Christians get in problems is they don't know the word. And what's wild is the devil targets people that don't know the word. What's even wilder is he targets people that do know the word. There is nothing wrong with you using a scripture 20 times a day to defeat the enemy with. If he keeps mouthing off, keep cutting him off. We don't fight against flesh and blood. It's against the prince and the power of the air. The devil, the enemy, the spirits of fear, the spirits of dominate, that want to dominate and intimidate. Now, look, I'm not saying you're going to get a hold of this overnight and, and, there, and it's just going to come easy and all this kind of stuff. But what I am saying is this, is if you know the word and you will build your life on this foundation... Whatever is going on in your life right now, whatever's, whatever's happening, if there's torment, if there's health issues, whatever it is, if you will lock on to this, and whatever scriptures the Lord shows you, if you've got to write them down on a 3 by 5 card, put them on your phone, whatever you've got to do, if you'll get them on the inside of you, and you will meditate, and you will feed upon those words, and you'll not only just speak them, but you'll believe that you have when you speak them. The Word of God will never fail. He will constantly and always bring to pass everything He said and everything He has promised. Everything He's done through His Son is for every single person that wants to believe that. That's the Jesus we serve. That's the Father we serve. A Father of love. And pass us. Now you look here. I told you to turn here. Proverbs 18. Look at verse, look at verse uh, uh, 20. Proverbs 18 verse 20. Says a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Death and life. Verse 21. <clears throat> Death and life or in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Now turn over to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. So death and life are in the power of the tongue. Very simple. I think we can all understand that. I don't need a graph or anything like that, pictures... We get a pretty good understanding that our tongue controls death or life in our life. Our tongue, here it is, this is huge. Our tongue controls death and life in our relationships. I've said some pretty bad things to people and it's ruined relationships. I've had people say pretty bad things to me and it's ruined relationships. You know, there's been things, well, aren't we supposed to, yeah, we can love people, but doesn't mean we have to hang around them. Oh, that's a, that's a big there. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. I know it. But we walk in love. Our heart attitude is to bless, to bless, to bless, to bless. God, they get on my nerves. Bless them. God, I don't like their mouth. Bless them. Don't be their BFF, but bless them. Best friends forever, if some of you that don't know what that means. Bless them. Bless them with your tongue. Bless them. Speak at them. You don't like what's going on in your state? Start speaking against the enemy that's trying to control this state. Amen. Curse him. Kick him out. And the people that are hooked up and buddied up with them will leave with him. That's the truth. We read about the people there. Give us a king. Give us a king. Give us a king. No, we don't want to do it your way, God. We want a person, someone that we can touch and, and talk to. Give us a king. Give us a king. Okay, here's your king. That was, that was dumb. Didn't work out very well. 
But we turn to the Spirit, we turn to the Father, and pray out His will, His plan, His purpose, and if He brings things up in our life that we need to rebuke or come against or cast out, He'll bring that to us. Don't go out and try to pick a fight with the devil. On your own, you'll lose. He's smarter than you. He's been around a long time. He's deceived many. But if God brings a situation before your eyes or before you in prayer or whatever, and it is to come against a demonic, then you do what he tells you to do, and he'll walk, he'll walk you right through it. And here's the awesome thing about it, and this will be a revelation to some of us, there's angels that will be there doing the work with you. Yeah. Not just you trying to go out. I had a friend of mine, he's been a Christian for a long time, he told me this story. One time he said he was out and he was a baby Christian, and he said he was out taking a walk, and he was out in the country, and he said, he got mad at the devil, and he said, I called the devil out. I said, why don't you come? Try to, you know, and called him out. I'll, I'll, I'll take you, all that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, he said he started feeling real sick and like he was getting ready to pass out. And he realized, wait a minute here. It's not my job to do that. So he asked the Lord, I shouldn't have did that, Lord, I guess, so forgive me. He didn't know, and he, asked, he said he started to feel normal again and all that, and then the Lord started teaching him about spiritual warfare and about not calling the devil out and trying to take him on. You know, I remember hearing stories years ago about some goofy people getting up a plane, flying around, and trying to fight the devil in the air. What kind of dumb garbage is that? It doesn't even make sense. I wouldn't want to be on that plane, I can tell you right now. Unless you had a parachute. We're not called to fight the devil. Jesus already kicked his butt all over the place. It's finished. It is finished. Because of the blood. From the cross of Calvary, praise God. He took care of it for us. When he pops his head up, head up out of the sand, he tells us how to handle it. In Jesus' name, shut up and go. That's what he did. As he walked this earth, the madman of Gadara. There was legions of them. He said, get out in Jesus. He said, get out in my name, I guess. He would say it that way. <laughs> and they did. He didn't have to go through some wild stuff. That's just how he took care of the devil, with his mouth. Same thing with you. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Okay, now look at Proverbs 4, verse 2. Or verse 1. Proverbs 4, verse 1. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, do not forsake my law, or you can say my instruction. Verse 3, when I was my father's son, tender, and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let, excuse me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. Excuse me, verse 5, get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, talking about wisdom. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will preserve you. Love wisdom, or love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all your getting, get understanding. No, listen. Know what your mouth is talking about. Know what God wants to use your tongue and your lips for. Let that be your number one agenda. When you get up, what can I use my mouth for today, Father? Some days He'll want you just to praise all day. You'll feel the praises of the Lord in your heart. Someday he'll want you just to pray and say maybe four or five words. Uh, words that are just super, super uh, uh, for that time or that season are very uh, 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 pivotal words that he wants you to say. Maybe he wants to use you in some verbiage that day, something that he'll use you to speak about or, 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 or some kind of situation he wants you to speak over. But I'm going to tell you right now, it is your job every day to bless with your mouth. When you find yourself getting over into attitude and aggravated, because it's going to happen, 
when you find yourself getting over to wanting to complain, please try to stop yourself and say, God, help me. That's all I know to do now. God, help me. I don't, want to, I, don't, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to say that. I don't want to go that way. I don't want to feel that way. I shouldn't feel defeated. Or feel sorrow in those areas. I should feel joy. I should have the joy. I'm not trying to be perfect or saying that you're never going to go through something you are and all that. But get your eyes on the Lord and let that be the first thing you do is you look to the Lord and how He wants you to respond. How many of y'all remember like times in your life when you had children or your grandchildren and you were with them somewhere and they were young and you were talking maybe to somebody and let's just say that adult or that person you were talking to looked over at your child or your grandchild when they were young and they asked them a question and that child or that grandchild looked over at you kind of like, what do I say? How do I respond to that, Dad? Mom? Grandpa, Grandma, how do I respond to that? That's what we need to do. We need to look at the Father. Lord, how do you respond to when the devil says, I'm going to kill you young? How do you respond, God? Well, you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. With long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. Sickness and disease cannot live in your body. That's what the Word says. That's what the Lord says. It's true. I remember January... Third, 2009. If I was like Brother Hagen, I'd tell you what time it was in the morning and all that exactly. The day, I don't remember. That's something else when he does that, huh? Remembers the time, the day, the minute, where, all that. It's just amazing. But I remember coming out of my sleep in the morning, on July the 3rd, 2009, coming out of my sleep in the morning, and I was saying this as I was waking up, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord saying that out of my sleep. And immediately I jumped out of bed and I wrote it down because I knew that was a word from the Lord for me. And my spirit was saying that as I was waking up. And I hold on to that. That's one of my bazookas that I have. That's one of my cannons or my tanks. Firepower. What devil? I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Jesus said it through me. That's his word. I said it. That was a word from the Lord. That's mine. Bam, it's over with. And you know what else helps me? You know why I know leukemia is never coming back in my body? That's one of the reasons why, but there's, there's like 30,000 more, or there's like 30 more other reasons why. And I have them all written down, and I have the paper laminated. And I carry it with me everywhere I go. But there was a woman here, and her name is Liz, and she's sitting right over there, and I'm putting her on the spot. There's many people that said stuff to me during that year of two, in 2008 when I was going through that. But the thing she said to me is one of the, is one of the tanks that I use. And she came up to me and she said, Mike, she said, Pastor Mike, the Lord spoke to me this, spoke to me this in prayer today. And he said that he is going to eradicate that disease out of your body. And me being brilliant, like I thought I was smart earlier. I had no idea what eradicated meant. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, praise God. I knew it was good or she wouldn't have shared it with me. You know what I mean? And I received it and I went home. And this was before I had, like, you know, the smartphone when you could ask it, what does eradicate mean? <laughs> so I went home and I got that thing. You remember, Coach, the Webster's Dictionary? <laughs> <laughs> <Good friend>. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled that thing out, found it. I at least knew how to spell it. I found it. And it's to destroy, to obliterate, to rip out, to remove, to abolish. You want to talk about doing a Holy Ghost jig, dance, cartwheel, whatever you want to call it. When I read that, I can tell you right where I was at. I was standing right by my closet, between my bed and my closet. And I read that thing. And I felt like I was going to hit my head on the ceiling. I jumped so high. And I said, yes! Glory! Yes! You're finished. It's done. And I received that word. And I still use it, and I used it this morning. Devil, uh, eradicated. Eradicated. Gone. 
Done. No more. Obliterated. Ripped out. Destroyed. Everyone in here can think of a word that was said to you. Either today, yesterday, two years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, forty years ago. Scott has used someone to say something to you that you'll never forget because it's burning right on the inside of you because it's a word from God. That is your ammunition. That is your response to the enemy. You got someone in your house acting like the devil? Take authority over the devil, not authority over that person, but authority over the spirit that's running them. And come against that. But here's some more wisdom. Make sure you're living right before you start doing stuff like that. That was one of my fears. Get up here and try to rebuke the devil, and the devil say, like, no, because this is what you're doing. That actually happened in the, in the Bible. Who do you think you are? The way you're living, you ain't rebuking me. You're like one of me. Oh, this is heavy. I know it is. But we're living in a heavy time right now, man. We're living in a time where there's no sissy footing around stuff. We've got to understand the blood of Jesus. We've got to know the power of God. We've got to move in His miracles, signs, and wonders. We've got to move in the harvest. We've got to move in the power, man. That's where we're at. No more time for religion and all these little games and all these programs and all this stuff, dude. We need a move of God. We need the real, genuine love and power to salvation of God is what we need. And we, we have it. We have it. I'm not preaching to a bunch of young babies in Christ. I really don't believe it. I believe I'm preaching to people that have some understanding today and some stuff. So this is more of an encouragement to you. Maybe some of you, it might feel like a little bit of a rebuke or a little bit of chastisement or something like that. Or maybe to some of you, it's refreshing. You needed to hear it. You needed the encouragement. You know, and that's good. I'll just be honest with you. Everything I just named, that's all for me today. It's happening inside of me today as I'm ministering this. But we're being set free. You want to be set free, you're being set free. You want to grow in the things of God, you're growing in the things of God. You don't want to, you won't. It's like Karen said this morning, how much of God do you want? How much? Because he's got enough. Plenty. For you. Oh, I'm ble we're blessed. Your mouth. To speak blessing. If someone comes up to you and has a word for you and you know it's the Lord, receive it. Iron sharpens iron. I need you. You need me. We need each other. This gathering we do here it's for a purpose. Amen. It's to be equipped. The Bible talks about that in Ephesians chapter 4, that it's here to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, to do the work of the Lord. The word that's taught here, the things that are done here, the training that's done here. And not only do we train each other and bless each other, but we go out and we do the work and the things that we've been equipped with, we go out in the marketplace and we give away. Yeah. This is a hospital. People are coming here and getting healed. They're coming and getting delivered. They're coming and getting saved. This is how it's happening. This is the transition our church has went into. This ministry, the Believer's Church of Madera, mom and dad pioneered it in 1983. It's no longer what it was in 1983. It's no longer what it was in 2005, 2010, 2014, 2016. We're at where we're now. We are a hospital and things have shifted. Things have changed. We've gone to another level in the anointing, the power, the glory of God. And people are going to start coming in and receiving. And guess what? God's going to place them in some of your lives. Yeah, that's right. And He's going to use you to father them, to mother them, to love them, to grandfather them, to grandfather, grandmother them. He's going to use you to help grow them. If I was you, I'd be looking for that. Because that's a blessing. To be able to help someone grow in the Lord. And to teach them and to love them and help them. And I know... A lot of people in here that are doing that now as we speak, I know that, at your work or in your neighborhood or something, a friend. Shoot, there's even people here this morning that are doing that with other people that are here this morning. It's happening. So guys, we're in for a glorious ride. Amen. That roller coaster ride with the Lord has started and we're on it. Amen. And we're going full speed. And I believe that anything can happen 
And I believe that anything can happen when God shows up, and I believe that anything can happen through you with God. So you grab a hold of that, and you start speaking worthy about yourself. You start speaking who you are in Christ. You start speaking uh, what, what God has done for you. You start speaking what you want in your life. You find out what the will of the Lord is, and you start declaring it over yourself. You start declaring it over your family, and declaring it over whatever else the Lord wants you to declare it over. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so, I hope this blessed you this morning. You know, death and life and the power of the tongue. Amen. Okay, so, next thing of business, and we're going to leave. I know it's 1140. I understand. I hear some stomachs growling, or that could just be me. The Lego My Ego waffles have worn off about an hour ago, so I put peanut butter on them, so I got some protein. Praise the Lord. So I'm good. Now, anybody need healing in their bodies right now? Stand up where they're at. You came here because you wanted to be healed in your body. That thought came through your mind or something like that this morning. Stand up. Okay? Okay. All right. Those of you that believe in prayer and healing, go lay your hands on people around you. Find somebody that's standing. Go put your hands on them. The Bible says lay hands on the sick. They'll recover. I don't just do this to do this. I don't do this every service. I just do it when I feel like the Lord wants me to do it, and I feel like he wants me to do it. Okay, so those of you that are receiving prayer right now, you just receive. Don't beg. Don't do anything. Just let the Lord love on you through the people of God. So, Father, in Jesus' name right now, I bind sickness, I bind pain, I bind disease, and I command you to go in Jesus' name. Spirit of infirmity, loose these people right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we lay our hands on these people, your word says it to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We believe that word, God. We believe in the healing blood of Jesus. So I release and we release by faith healing right now in Jesus' name. Be free. Pain leave. Healing come now in Jesus' name. And I thank you for a manifestation of the healing presence and power of God right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. We receive our healing right now, Lord. We receive it right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you for healing right now. We thank you for healing us, Father, right now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name, amen. Anybody have a change in their life and, and, and that's getting prayed for, just, just lift your hand right now and wave it at me. There's been a change. Pain left. Check yourself if you can. Any manifestation? Diane, what? More. Amen, you feel strength, okay? All right, amen. Praise the Lord. You're having pain on your side or your back or something? Okay, anybody else, something change? You can physically feel right now. Test it out by faith. Don't give up on it. Check it. Anybody else? All right. Lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Healing works, amen? Does the number 3-5 mean anything to anybody? And I want to say it's probably like a date. March the 5th. Does that mean anything to anybody? March 5th, 3-5? March 5th? I'm going to ask it. Okay, what does that mean to you? That's your anniversary. You and George's anniversary. Okay, come on up here. That's a good thing. Praise God. Now, let me, what does it mean to you? Okay, that's a little deep for me, but that's good. Amen. So, no, I'm just playing with you. That's good. Yeah. But no, that is good. New beginnings. And that is everywhere. I agree. Thank you, Father. Three, five. March the 5th. Glory to God, man. Hallelujah. Does, I don't know, do you have anybody in your family named Gracie or Grace? You do? George's um, aunt. She used to come with me, the little lady. George's aunt? Yeah. Because I heard 35 this morning, and I said, what is it? And I heard the Lord say, March the 5th. I said, okay, that's what I felt like the Lord was showing me. It was a date, like I said. And then I heard after that, Gracie, or Grace. And um, so my mind is like, okay, yeah, thank you for your grace, Lord. That's so good. But then as I put my hand on you, I heard Gracie again, and it was a name of somebody. So that's, that's George's aunt. 
Okay, cool. So God calls you up here for your marriage, for your anniversary, for your relationship with you and George. He's going to do something for that or in that, even though things are good, whatever. I don't know. I just, I know, I just know you, and I know him, and I love you guys. So he'll do something in you, but also for your aunt, whatever that might be. I don't know what, or for his aunt, whatever that might be. Is she sick or anything she that you know of? With her body. Yeah. She has, is she, is, is she old or? No? She's probably in her 50s. 50s? Okay. Yeah. That's not old. Say amen. Hallelujah. Because 50s getting closer to me, so that ain't old. Praise God. All right. Let's stretch your hands out to Bernadette right now. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you right now for Bernadette and George. Is he working today? Yeah. Lord, we thank you for George right now and Bernadette. Lord, I thank you for their relationship, their marriage, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for bringing them in to what you've called them to do as a couple, as a married couple, Lord. I thank you that they're both anointed to do what you've called them to do. I thank you that there's both power and love and anointing in their marriage, in their life, in their relationship, and also in their ministry. Yes, God. Thank you for that, Lord. He'll use both of you to touch lives in the future. It's coming. The day's coming where he's going to use you to do that. Diane, you're sitting back there. I want you to write this down, or somebody in the family, write this down as I'm talking this the best you can. You can listen to it later. But God's going to use you in the future to touch lives, many lives. And you know what I see? I see this, and, I, and the people that I see you touching are people that are majorly, like, wounded, like, really hurt. And it could be, like, something physically, but, but, but mostly I believe it's going to be emotionally in their minds their hearts. And I see just, a, just a, a throng of people that God's using you to pray over and to bless and to help. See, because he's done a work in you over the years, he's continuing to do a work like he's in, in all of us, but he's doing a work in you and he's showing you some things concerning that ministry in the future. And it's not too far off. And make sure you relay this to George, and if he wants to call, that's fine. I'll talk to him about it, but He's going to use you guys in the future to help people that are wounded emotionally and in their heart. And I see, like I said, a throng of people, a lot of people that he's going to use you to help and bless. Some will be one at a time. Some will be like in, in a little bit like a crowd or something like that. But he's going to use you. So you stay open to that in Jesus' name and let him lead you and he'll start bringing those people to you. You don't have to freak out or worry about it. Just let him do it and he'll show you what to say and how to do it because that's how he does things. They're called to it in Jesus' name. So I speak blessing over their marriage. I speak strength. And I thank you that God's in the center of it, Lord, and that they love you. And that you work it out in their life, what needs to be done. And Lord, we lift Grace up right now, Lord. You showed that lady to me. Gracie, you showed her to me. I speak healing in her body in Jesus' name. And Lord, I ask you to touch Gracie right now as I lay my hands on Bernadette, Lord. I thank you that as she goes and lays her hands on Gracie, Lord, that that anointing, the residue of that anointing will come on and it, and I'm on upon her and into her in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name that healing has to come to her right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that life is released into Gracie's body right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Yes. Gracie, we say come back in Jesus' name. Come back to your promised land. In Jesus' name. She's one of the prodigals. We called in today. I believe that. So make sure that you just... Call her today or one of you call her today or whatever and talk to her and just tell her that we prayed for her today and we love her. And that you can pray for her. You can pray for her over the phone, whatever. It doesn't matter. The tangible anointing, will, Jesus will touch her over the phone. You just do whatever you feel like you need to do in that, in Jesus' name. Amen. But you grab a hold of that word. You write it down. You listen to it. You do the best you can to, to keep it in front of you. And you just thank the Lord for it. And you walk the journey with him and he'll lead you right into what he said. Amen. That's so awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't God good how he does things, man? Just proves himself so full of love. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you give me just...
10 seconds, 15 seconds here, just for a second. Lord, are you done? <laughs> just want to hear. I don't want to leave unless he wants me to do something else. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. New beginnings, like Tammy said, new beginnings. A lot of us, is, it's a new beginning. I feel like it's a new beginning in my life in some areas concerning ministry and my, my, my personal life. I really feel that way. Amen. Let's stand up. Praise the Lord.